Hi, I'm here today celebrating the release of a wonderful novel I got to narrate through Audible's ACX program by a wonderful author named Edie Clare. And the name of the book is Long Time Coming. And uh, Edie is a wonderful writer. She's fun, warm. Uh, the story itself has a little bit of a ghost story intertwined with it, a little bit of mystery. Um, but I love it because it's first person. And to me, those are always the most fun ones to read. And uh, this is no exception. It's a terrific book. And I want to read just a little bit for you to give you a taste. My mother's lips were fixed into the taut, pained shape they always assumed when she disapproved of my actions, but was making a genuine effort not to say so. They had been like that since I had announced my plans last evening. For a woman as opinionated as Abigail Hudson, this marked an impressive feat of endurance. Joy, dear, she began, at last conceding her battle. Have you thought about why you are doing this? I didn't look at her, but continued repacking my overnight bag. Of course I had thought about it. I had thought of little else since signing the sales agreement. The closing wouldn't be for a few weeks. In the meantime, the seller would allow me to live in the house as if I were renting. The lack of anxiety I felt over the prospect was, frankly, quite baffling. All I could explain to my mother was that buying the Carver's old home felt right. Why? I wasn't sure. She walked past me to the head of my bed and removed a small picture frame from the wall. Do you remember when this was taken? She asked, extending it. When we were eight, I answered tonelessly, not looking at it. I sat down on the edge of the bed and rummaged through my bag for nothing. Despite her advanced years, my mother's mind was sharp as a razor, and she surveyed me with eyes that perceived far more than they should, particularly since she was legally blind. Hmm. You used to call it the summer of the kittens, she said fondly, sitting beside me. I can't remember what you named them, though. I zipped up the bag in my lap and exhaled. I loved my mother dearly, but her belief that I had dealt poorly with Jenny's death, both at the time and ever since, was a bone of contention between us. I didn't know how other people dealt with loss. I only knew what worked for me. My method was simple. If it hurt, I didn't do it. So thanks for joining me here in the TARDIS booth at Skyboat Media. And uh, I hope you'll give it a listen. Uh, it was, uh, Edie's a wonderful person and she's written a wonderful book. And it was my honor to narrate it for her.